In this video, I'll show you what can happen when you apply a product called Prodoral R6-1 without verifying in what conditions the piping, the gas piping is. Before explaining and showing you what happened, first of all I'm going to explain what is this product and how it is applied. Uh, for those who already know this product and know how to apply it, know the procedures, uh, you can jump this part, go to minute and watch the rest of it. Podra is a product produced by a German company called TIB Chemicals AG. This product is used to seal piping on the inside, stop gas or water leaks and uh, increase its uh, usability. This technology is used when repairing or replacing pipework comes out much too expensive or is impossible due to where the piping is installed. For example, when it goes through inaccessible parts of a building. Additionally, this product has a life uh, expectancy of about three or five years only. So it is usually used only to mitigate uh, emergency situations while you decide what other options are for a long-term uh, repair. A repair using copper pipes should last at least 30 or 50 years, maybe even more. We have two types of prodoral. Prodoral H that is used for sealing the piping that is used uh, for heating like uh, radiators and uh, Prodoral R61 which is used for sealing the inside of gas pipes. In this video I'm going to talk to you about Prodoral R61 which we use for sealing uh, leaks in gas piping, especially in home gas. Prodoral R61 is a plastic material that has a viscosity similar to a very thick paint. And the procedure to apply it is the following. First of all, we have to disconnect all appliances and the gas meter from the piping, leaving only the uh, cutoff valves uh, in the appliances. In these cutoff valves, we have to connect a compressor that injects air at high pressure to eliminate any rest of dust or bits of metal that might be inside the pipe. Then we have to introduce this prodoral by compression into the piping, making it run from the gas meter up to each one of the appliances. When the prodoral starts coming out of that cutoff valve, the cutoff valve is closed and we do the same in every cutoff valve that comes to an appliance. And we maintain the product inside the piping under pressure for a few hours. Then we open the cutoff valves and we let all the excess prodoral leave the piping. Then we introduce a polyurethane pig into the piping and make it go through the pipes and out of each gas valve. The purpose of this is to clean any excess of prodoral and make sure that all the pipe has a uniform diameter. Then we introduce compressed air at normal temperature, which should help to dry the prodoral quicker. Finally, we do a leak test in all the piping to make sure there are no leaks. This should be the end of the process. We install the appliances, we test they're working fine, and that should be it. However, in this tutorial, there's something missing. Something all the specialists that apply this product should do before hiring the service, because not all tubing can be sealed with Poderal R61. The maker of this product establishes clear in its technical documents that Prodoral R61 is only useful for sealing uh, piping and connections that are threaded. Even if in practice some micro leaks can be covered with this product and sealed. 
this product must not be applied to iron tubing that has leaks due to corrosion. And the leak rate of these pipes must be below five liters per hour. Above this amount, the Produral R61 will not work. In the following video, we can see what can happen in a gas tubing when there's extensive corrosion and the big leaks and the man in charge was applying this Produral R61 did not verify in what conditions this tubing was or which was the leak rate in this tube. When applying the Produral R61, the pressure of the product over the corroded part of the tubing transformed this leak there was into a big leak and into a great explosion of Produral R61, which if it wasn't for the carpet that was on the floor, the man applying the product would have become a green smurf. However, there was irreparable damage to the carpet and extensive damage to the concrete below it. As you can see, the hole in the pipe ended being about one centimeter diameter due to the Prozoral R61. Here we can see the iron pipe. It should be black, but it is all brown due to the rust. Here we can see the loss of material, producing different levels and pipe diameters. An enormous loss of material. At any moment, the whole pipe was going to leak, and if the users of this apartment hadn't noticed it on time, it would have blown up the whole apartment and part of the building. And over here, the same situation. A big loss of material, and a pipe with reduced diameter. Oxidized iron that has lost its integrity. And here is where the pipe that comes from the meter enters the apartment. And that line goes to the stove or hob. This is why, before starting with this kind of procedure, we have to verify in which conditions are the tubing, especially when it's iron tubing. If we can't see the level of corrosion in the piping, where the leak is, at least we have to apply a load test. For this, we must inject air or an inert gas at a pressure of three bars and keep it there for at least three or five minutes. After that, we start a leak test that will let us determine or measure the amount of leak in liters per hour. According to TIB in Germany, the leak test must be done with inert gas over there at a pressure of 50 millibars for 10 minutes. This for residential gas works. Additionally, we must let the tubing stabilize its temperature just like any leak test before we start taking note of the pressure fall. Once we know which is the fall in pressure through our leak test, now we will be able to uh, calculate our leak rate. To calculate leak rate, we also need to know the volume of the tubing from the gas meter up to every appliance. For this, we need to know the length of each part of the, of the piping and the size of the tubing. If we don't have a floor plan including the gas works we will have to do an estimate 
of where the piping goes through and which are the legs and the size of uh, the piping. But uh, that is something I won't go through in this video. Once we know which is the pressure loss and we have the volume of our piping, now we can go into uh, calculating the uh, leak rate. And for that, we apply the following formula. Here I'll leave you an example of the calculations for uh, residential uh, gas works. The operating pressure is 22 millibars. That's the pressure we use in this example for residential gas works at a low pressure. As barometric pressure, we can use a standard of 1,013 or 1,030 millibars because it doesn't vary very much. It's insignificant for this example. For gas works in low pressure, we apply a test pressure of 50 millibars. Well, I hope you liked this video and I hope you liked the information that I have delivered here and uh, I hope it also helps you to uh, apply this product without all the mistakes you've seen in this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up share it, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.